As we celebrate our Mass this morning, let's take a few moments to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, Peter, explain to the crowds about the mystery of your death and resurrection. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you, too, you met two of your followers on the road to Emmaus, and you walked with them and had dinner in their home. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you make yourself known to them in the breaking of the bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You, who are Jews, need all of you stay in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You, who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man condemned to, commanded to you by God, with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad, my tongue exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your holy ones to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch, David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised Jesus. Of this we have all been witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God. He received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourn, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the first time for you, who thought through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. day of the week. Two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looked downcast. One of them, called Lephus, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deeds and word before God and all the people who our chief priests and elders both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, were astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back and reported, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those, some of us went to the tomb, found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them who referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going further. For they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. 
With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he spoke to us on the way, and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found, gathered together, the eleven, and those with them, who were saying, the Lord has truly raised, been raised and appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he had made himself known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus mentioned many times, in many places, privately and to his disciples and publicly, and in synagogues, that he was going to be put to death, and on the third day would rise from the dead. He said this openly and many times. And yet, they didn't know what he was talking about. They didn't understand what he was saying. Of course, many did not believe him. But even his own disciples, after he had told them all this, when the time came, they didn't know what had happened. They even said, somebody took his body away. We don't know where it is. Even though they had heard him say it so many times. But they had also seen him die on the cross. They'd seen his torture and his agony. They saw him shed his last drop of blood. They saw him put into the tomb. They saw the tomb sealed. So, it's understandable that they'd have a hard time believing that he had done what he said he would do and had risen from the dead. That is what we celebrate during the octave of Easter. We celebrate the joy of the disciples, realizing and believing and knowing that Jesus had indeed been raised from the dead. Let's take a few moments now to ask God to grant our prayers and our petitions. For safety and protection from all diseases, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our livelihood and for all to have gainful employment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, especially those in the medical profession, for safety and protection from all disease and for all the equipment they need to safely perform their professions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who struggle with unemployment and those concerned about the future of their employment situation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and in need of our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died recently, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Father Peter Jaros, who is seriously ill. For him and for the improvement of his health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for each of our own special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we look to you for all of our needs. Grant these things which we ask of you in faith. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen.
sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, everyone, with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, Richard his administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Philip, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let our Savior's command inform a divine teaching we dare to say. Savior, Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins. On the faith of your church, and graciously grant him peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ give me safe unto eternal life. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, Father, 
Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.